know where this joker is right there. Okay. <laughs> Hello, friends, uh, family members, whoever, whoever ends up watching this. Okay, so this is a, a little project we wanted to, to do on, on our heritage. I'm going to let Dad do, well, we're just going to go at it together as a conversation, but it basically has to do with my great-grandfather <laughs> and Dad's grandfather. And uh, if we get confused along the way, sorry. Okay, so um, all I'll say is that we have a book that was that is titled The Story of a Preacher from Russia, which we actually couldn't find right now. I know I have one in Spain. And it's, uh, is that an autobiography? Did he write that? No. Well, yeah, he wrote the book. The, okay. other, the other one is just a translation into English. Oh, I see. Okay. And so his name is, was Emil Bonikowski. And so I've always had a special place in my heart because I, I believe much of the blessing on our family through the generations, you know, I, I, I believe it goes back to, to great grandfather and even a little bit before him. So we thought we would just walk through dad had, dad did a kind of a, a condensed version of his book and added some things and did some research. And so we're going to walk through dad's uh, document that he prepared sort of like for the family to have if, if we wanted to just as a resource. And we're just going to walk through it, talk about it and try not to get too tangled up. <laughs> okay. So dad, go ahead. You want to start with a verse or whatever you want to say? <laughs> All right, I just wanted to uh, to start it off that talking about my grandfather is just uh, in honor of him and his life and ministry in what they call the old country uh, in Europe and uh, the blessing he has been on my particular life. I have read the booklet over and over again, and I just got a lot of blessing from it. And there's a verse that, that I think of when I think of him, uh, Psalm 61, 5, For thou, O God, hast heard my vows, thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Mm -hmm. And I just put Grandpa right into there. I'd like to start off with that. I'm going mm -hmm. to uh, follow this thing on my computer. My memory absolutely would not cover all of this <laughs> stuff I've put into here. But uh, well, that's I'd why like we have start, it written down. Yeah, that's. I'd like to start with that. Make just a commentary, perhaps before we start, mm -hmm. that all of this took place in what is known or was known as Volinia. Volinia was an area of Europe which covered uh, southeastern Poland. The southern portion of Belarus, southeast. So that's where the war is go is right now. Right, right? now, yeah, so. and northwestern Ukraine, uh -huh. and that northwestern Ukraine is just sort oh, of I'm west. Sorry. I said, yeah. I said, southeastern Poland. It's yeah. no, it's basically where the war now is. The part that's in uh, Ukraine. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather yeah. ministered in northwestern Ukraine, which is straight west of Kiev. Okay, so it's it's actually there. as far from the battlefront as you can from be the right front now. lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. from the I, front lines. I was lines. confused. Yeah, okay. And then there's the other part of it takes place in a place called Ornberg, which is, uh, if you remember your geography, there's a huge when Asia supposedly starts. There is a large mountain range that uh, is called the Ural Mountains, and it is down there on the southern portion of that. My grandfather was. And when the Second World War started, he was exiled to Siberia across the Ural Mountains from Orenburg. And then uh, when he was able to get out of uh, Siberia, he went to the area of Orenburg. And there he had a uh, quite, a, quite a ministry okay. there. Okay, and that's what we'll get to, right? That's what we'll... So, uh, Volinia... So. That wasn't a country, though. It was no, a region. It was just a region. Just what they called that area? Under the Tsar. Under okay. the Tsar, that whole area was Russia. Okay. And it was known as Volinia. So okay. when you talk about Volinia, it could be any of those. Okay, yeah. There. So nowadays, they don't, 
the term no, doesn't no, mean no. anything, be, no. but it did back then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead then. And I think that's uh, most, I'll find some pictures and throw it up on the video when I can. Maybe, maybe some maps, although I'm not, I don't know, I'm not much on Russian geography anyway, but it helps to see it a little bit, at least in terms of where it is <laughs> related to Europe helps a bit. So let's go to the first. So he highlighted in this document, he went back and highlighted everything in green here that that is specifically directly related to great grandpa. And uh, so go ahead if you want to, th this first thing that comes up. Okay, so the heritage uh, basically goes back to uh, uh, my grandfather's parents. Right. And that is where, you know, like 1842. <laughs> to 1922. Uh, mm -hmm. In his book, he talks about his parents, especially his dad's conversion. He, uh, I quote here, his father, uh, Yusef, married That's a Joseph, widow. right? It's Joseph, I guess. Yeah, probably. Be the uh -huh. English translation, yeah. He married a widow, Mrs. Schweib, with four children. She was not my mother. My grandfather is saying this. Okay. This widow had a farm, but it was very run down. In the second or third year after their marriage, uh, this is the part that interests me particularly, father was converted through the preaching of the gospel by traveling Baptist preachers. Okay, this is your great-grandfather. This is my, my great-grandfather, mm -hmm. and he is, he is living in what I... Uh, said was uh, uh, southeastern Poland. Poland, okay. Across the border from Ukraine. Okay. And here's come through his village where he's living, come some Baptist preachers. preachers. Uh -huh. And he was received as a member into the small Baptist church. Right. And my father as a Christian took his faith in Christ very seriously. So so, so it goes that's the back the start of the heritage. So it goes back three three generations yeah. uh, before you. Okay. Sounds good. Then there's a little bit of detail then and, when uh, And when he died born. in twenty two, right? Uh, Nineteen twenty two. Yes, exactly. Okay. And my uh, my grandfather was born in eighteen eighty one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's born in, in this southeastern Poland. Uh he passed away in October uh, 1967 when he was 86 years old in Canada. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is just where he was born. And there is a little bit about his, uh, I've got a fair bit copied here from, uh, from the booklet about my grandpa's uh, conversion okay. when he was saved. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, go ahead and read it. I guess. Go ahead and read it. Most saved and baptized. This was nineteen hundred. Is it turn remember? of the century? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so he was born in eighty one, in exactly. Poland or Polish Volhynia, as you have here. Right. And he died. He died up here in Canada in Medicine Hat, sixty seven. Okay. And now we'll go back to nineteen hundred and go ahead. I have here. As I read. I have a Just description go ahead and read of this it. because I, I like the way he. And my grandpa expresses himself. Sure, absolutely. So he's writing, After much fighting, struggling, reading, and praying, I finally found salvation and forgiveness of my sins. Highly praised be Jesus Christ. What a joy it was that all of us nine souls had found peace. He's talking about his brothers and sisters. Okay. At this moment, okay. I can. We had him. My <laughs> grandpa had sixteen say. children. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Had sixteen children. Two died in in a in Europe, and uh, uh, fourteen came across uh, okay. the ocean. Okay. Uh, when we came together, each one had something to tell of what trials and struggles each one of them had through or things they had to go through until they found peace. We okay. decided right there to apply for baptism. <laughs> one, day, one day, you can't talk of baptism without baptism. So uh, one day the preacher left the members of the church come together for a special meeting uh, in, to examine the new converts for baptism. We were called in, each one separately. Now, he doesn't and, say where this happened, did it? No. Okay. This is in that same in that uh, area. I, yeah, that. Pol I think it's Poltanice, but I'm not okay. positive about that. Uh, 
to, so they called them together to examine uh, the new converts for baptism. We were called in, each one separately, and examined about our conversion, faith, and experience. Here we had, for the first time, the opportunity public... Huh? What, what happened to your... There we go. Oh, there it is. It, it might have just like, gone to sleep. I must have touched something earlier, yeah. Uh, you see, uh, find yourself. Uh, say, we were publicly to declare before the church our newfound salvation, of which we were made partakers. We all were received by the church to be baptized hmm. on the 13th of July, 1900, being beautiful weather, we were baptized in a neighborhood river in the death of Jesus. I will never forget the hour when we went to that river all dressed in white and our hearts full of radiant joy. It seemed to me as if we were carried on angel wings while walking down to the river. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> now, when is he writing this? This is... Uh, he's looking I understand back, him correct, yeah. Already he's in looking Canada? back in Canada. Okay, so right? he's already in and Canada. Then my, and then his nephew, a nephew of his, some relative of mine, oh, translated, translated uh, it because into Because he did English. it in German. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, certainly makes me... Okay, I, I, I make a comment over yeah. here. When I read that about his baptism experience, it reminds me when we were missionaries, my wife and I were missionaries in Spain, when I baptized my first person in the minister, her name... <laughs> happened to be Puri, whose husband had been saved uh, in the military in uh -huh. Spain. And I baptized her in the cold waters of the Bidasoa River uh, near Irun, Spain, uh, which came down from the mountains. They were okay. cold. It yeah, cold. okay. And that was the first baptism of the church, right? right. The, the first... second baptism of the church, I was in it, but you had already built Oh, the baptistry. The baptistry, okay. and so I didn't have to go to the river. <laughs> I was baptized <laughs> in the first, but there were several of us baptized. It, but it was okay. a brand new baptistry that you had <laughs> that so you had built. We were good Baptists when we bought the lo the locale. When we bought building, the, uh, the building, building uh, the first thing I planned was a baptistry. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, we weren't going to do it in the river anymore. It wasn't. Very appropriate. Then, yeah, you did. Like, you did know to baptize her in the right direction, right? right. <laughs> uh, not yeah, not flowing yeah. down river, whatever. However that goes. Okay, yeah, exactly. 1902. Then. Okay, then it starts. Uh, he is 1902, which means he's 21. That yes, 21. Okay. Right. 19 uh, plus two. Yeah. He was sent by uh, by the authorities. He was sent to Saint Petersburg, Russia. That's that land that's just uh, just east of Finland. Right, yeah, I can see so, that. Mm -hmm. and, and start uh, to start military service. So that's where he lived for... That was a, a long while. ways up. Uh, 640 miles is what my nephew, uh, his nephew figured. So he a, is a Russian citizen. He's, he's a, German. They're all right. Germans, but yeah. he's a Russian citizen made to do russian exactly he had to do the military okay. everybody they have right. to be conscripted and uh have to remember that this is during the years of the last czar of russia okay so that everybody that lived in those areas that we've mentioned they were all russian citizens right even yeah. though they were they could even be german they were polish german or whatever ukrainian or whatever whoever okay. was the first one to go there no idea. I have no idea. My great great grandfather or whoever down the line, he uh, he wasn't a Christian, and so I didn't. No, right, we didn't the, start with him. This <laughs> this uh, Stanislaw Bonikowski that it says up here was your great great yeah. great grandfather, and he was a victim of drunkenness. He right, says. so he, he wasn't was. saved. And then Yusef got and the saved. the next one yeah. that was the first one in the line. In was, the, was in that 18, yeah. 1870s or so maybe. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. We're down to 1902. He went to St. Petersburg. And you have a picture of him there. I might pop that picture up. And then 1904. You see that? That's Yeah, that's uh, just before Easter. Apparently he was let, he couldn't go home. That, that was two years later, okay. Two years later, he left St. Petersburg and went back to Poland. And uh, there, one year later, 
he was called actually to do his military service uh, in in Poland also. Again, though? No? Different, pardon? That's a second military service? No, I think that other one was some kind of, uh, some kind of preparation okay. thing. I remember reading in the book that he was a guard at the uh, Palace of the Tsar. Oh, wow. In, in St. Petersburg, yeah. Okay. I don't know how those two things yeah. fit mm -hmm. together. Sure. That was a process, apparently. Uh, so he's called to do military service in, excuse me, in Lowitz, Poland? Yeah. yeah. Part of the Tsar's empire as a medical... Yeah, war commission. He worked as some kind of a medical... Okay helper or assistant or 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 whatever he was very handy with he always had a little bag that he carried around he knew how to get rid of uh, uh headaches and oh, uh who and great grandfather and, yeah oh okay uh, yeah my grandfather okay. yeah he was always helping healing people, people? <laughs> Hel healing people <laughs> okay mm -hmm. so and i see there though you don't have it in green you have a 1907 he married uh maria maria zosman and then she died yeah later. that was uh, she died earlier in okay. in in canada okay and sometime later he he remarried okay and then it uh, says his father who was yusef died yeah, in uh, 89 years old. Yeah, okay. Wow. Okay, well, there we have something down there in 1908. What's that? 1908 is this the first mention I find in the book where he is uh, working uh, as, as uh, a ministry or as an, in, in ministry. Okay. He was, uh, it says in the book, he was called, he was a co worker. Okay. And this was in a Baptist church in Podoli, which is also in that same southeastern Polish area, area of mm -hmm. Poland. Yeah. About 50 miles from Warsaw, it says. Exactly. Yeah. There. And he ministered in a lot of his ministry was, uh, was pastoring a church and then having missions. Okay. Uh, scattered all in here. It says he ministered in four places. Four right. other places. Yeah. So. Okay. He was incredible. And that's just all with horse and buggy. Yeah. He wasn't, he didn't have a 65 Cadillac or something <laughs> or other. It was horse right. and buggy, yeah. And then later, and, the next uh, one says he was serving in six places. Right. That's the progression in, the, in his ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It was called in 1912 again. Oh, uh, 1912, yeah, okay. Kr Krobanus, same place, Polish, Polina. Uh, the only place I couldn't find that town, but I found Chelm, uh -huh. which was 16 miles from the border of Ukraine. Okay. Uh, so it was down in that corner there. So I, Chelm shows up in a Google search right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He writes, I received a call from the church at Kurbanash Chelm huh. in the administrative subdivision of Lublin. Lublin is a... It's like, it reminds me of Dublin from Ireland. Right. Lublin, that's where my, where Helga, my, my wife, that's where her brother Careful, was born. Careful, don't touch born. your mic. Uh -huh. okay. That's where he was born in that area someplace. Around Who was? L Lublin. Eddie. Oh, oh Eddie wow. and, okay. uh, Uncle Eddie. Okay. Eddie and Bruno, they were, they were born in that area. Oh, okay. And they had no contact, right? Uh, Surely not. No, they wouldn't know each no, other. No, no, no. They then, yeah. they were a slightly different area, but okay. enough wow. difference so they didn't know each other. Uh, it is interesting that here, when he was thirty-one years old, he was ordained at at that particular church there okay. in Kurbanas. Ordained as a Baptist preacher, I guess. Right. Okay. And that, and that was serious. That was downright serious. They had a whole bunch of Committee. preachers together. Mm -hmm. And uh, went through typical questioning, mm -hmm. and that's when the problems really started. Yeah, the war in, problems. In 1914, the First, first World, World War, war yeah. broke out, and you can just imagine what that meant for Jew for German peoples living in Russia, because it was Hitler coming. Yeah, no, Hitler, not yeah. This is the first war. I'm sorry. Uh, it was also Germany. Yeah, it, it was wasn't Hitler. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it was the older, the first world war. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, and so most of the Germans, there were quite a few villages. Uh, I, I read a book where they were talking about Baptist churches in twenty villages in that particular area of mm -hmm. Ukraine. Practically everybody there 
was sent to uh, to in exile to Siberia, someplace or other. Uh, not everybody the same place. They were crammed into car, cattle cars. Okay. And uh, I think it says it here, right? In nineteen fifteen. Okay. Yeah, that's where. And then it. Uh, they went from there. They went across. And went through, I think, the corner of, of Ukraine went up into Belarus, which is in the news I've heard much of that. today. Yeah, 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 that's a lot in the news. That's where the nearest train station was to okay. go. Uh, to go east. To go east. In fact, my brother found where the village that they lived in in Siberia. Oh wow! He found that by by checking that train. Oh, to see, he yeah. said that they went sure. in a train. Okay, yeah. And that's the train that, that went there. And for just sort of reference sake, uh, my uncles, they, these are kids now, yeah. jammed into railroad cars. Hmm. Uh, the oldest, Eric, was six, six, Oscar was five, Irvin was three, and Alma, and my first aunt, was one year old when they made this okay. trip all the way to So, Korea. So he is 30, 30, doing the math here, he's 33. And yep. has four kids, and they're loaded up. And ha it says uh, that they loaded up in in something like cattle cars and had to change trains from time to time as they had. So it's not them, obviously. It's like hundreds and hundreds of oh, yeah. people. Yeah, just wow. uh, carloads. The war, war. Right. what the war does, huh? Yeah, that's what. And the war then, does, and so. okay, and then you mention Fedorovka. Uh, in Siberia. And they went to Fedorovka. That was That's where they were sent? Yeah, my brother found that that village on on a uh, Oh yeah, here it is Google. And it is in Google Maps, I see. Right uh, there. I found there. that I just put in there the name <laughs> distance from Chelm, which oh, yeah. we knew and then all the way to Fedorovka. Wow. There are a number of Fedorovkas, but they're not all along the train. Yeah. <laughs> train so train, this so. one is 20 Twenty-six hundred kilometers. Exactly. Yeah, That's, it was a long trip. So, uh, oh, it says twelve days, right? I think that was trying. Yeah, yeah at I least that's so. what it says. Okay. Okay. Well, that trip of 12, 12 days. Right? Okay. Uh, okay. And then so they... he come. He 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 talks a little bit about a trip there. In his book, he says we traveled about six hundred miles from the city of Troitsk. This is already in Siberia. This okay. is near, uh, somewhere in the area of where my grandpa wound up. There, we have a little bit of confusion with sure. some of those towns. They're hard yeah. to come up with, yeah. and they're nothing at all like they are today. Where my grandpa lived back then was a small little village. Is now a thriving city. So, huh. uh, and they don't even uh, use the same letters, do they? I mean, that's Russian, Russian names. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Gotta that, be that's complicated. <laughs> complicated, that's for sure. Okay. So anyway, the whole uh, distance was what about three thousand? Well, probably three thousand kilometers. Right? That's it. Arriving to Fedorovka. Okay. The whole distance. Well, uh, let's see. It took twelve days from Kovin. And the most inter okay. He says the most interesting part of the trip was uh, in the Ural Mountains, when we alighted from the train at Fedorovka on the twelfth of August. 1915, the Russians of that village called for us with their peculiar horse carriages. wonder what was peculiar about it. I don't know. Uh, I thought about that, reading that, but I don't know. And took us to our living quarters. A small cook and bake house in the rear of the yard was assigned to us. So right. they are... they. They have to leave everything that's theirs everything. behind. Land, houses, exactly. Anything they could carry is all they all they could carry is whatever they could. Exactly. That's all they could take um, with them, huh? There, there's, there's uh, information there that's lacking too. My, my grand, my grandpa, basically, <laughs> he survived through a lot of that because he traded his medical. Oh, okay. Because so, he, yeah. he had been in commission when he was in the military. Yeah. That's what he was doing. So he learned so stuff he that learned, came to, stuff. That came to bat would, for him. Uh, many times I read in the book that he traded it for a passage on the train from this, to, this okay. town to that town. Okay. I had the, the, the problems with the train back in those days, uh, in this period of time, is they would come to a train station, 
and they'd park it someplace there, and it, it'd sit there until they tried it. It had to be moved to another uh, another point. Okay, so the they trip. didn't have regular train no, routes. No, that no, were, no, okay. no, oh, no, wow. no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was a difficult time. Okay. Yeah. And then comes uh, birth the birth of, of my father. Of Helmut, yeah. 1916. He was, as far as I know, my oh. aunt, uh, one of my living aunts. I only have one left. Right. We just she visited her the other day. She's exactly. 94. Yeah. She's, as lively as you can imagine yeah. a 94 could ever be. <laughs> yeah. She said that my dad wasn't the only one born in uh in siberia mm -hmm. but i haven't been able to find anything and i didn't have time to, to sure. argue with her but right. so, <laughs> well we know he was right yeah he, he was, was born, born in there. fedorovka yeah he's uh 107 years ago yeah, okay well, he's, uh, he's he died rather young now, most of the uncles lived in the 80s and 90s our uh -huh. uncles and aunts uh -huh. but he was younger he had a heart attack and uh -huh. uh, and okay. cancer at the same time. So he's. Uh, okay, he's, you want to uh, quote from the book there you have? Yeah, well, our helmet was born in the winter of 1916 on January 11th in the village of Fedorovka. Huh. Uh, let's see. So he joined then the so others. So five of them. After Urban Alma and they're in Siberia. Now he's number five. Okay, so he uh, was born in Siberia. That's interesting. He was born uh -huh. in Siberia. There's some interesting stories in the books about the tremendous, they had tremendous snowstorms, way worse than I experienced growing up in Canada. <laughs> they sometimes found the house finding the, the smoke coming up out of the out chimney. Of the snow. <laughs> yeah, out of the chimney. They dig down and they survived in there for whatever, there was some kind of breathing apparatus or whatever. <laughs> anyway, it was rather. It was rather interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then came, they, they only stayed there. As far as I can figure out from the book, they were in this village, Vedadovka, for one year. Oh. Okay. So you're talking about in 1916, the Tsar was murdered. That we'll show that later. And then in 1917, the Bolshevik Revolution started, and they were exiled during that period of time and by the time they left to go in 19 uh, even in 1916 i guess when my dad was just barely one year one old. one year yeah. yeah well he was born in 16 yeah. so yeah so it's, first it's, year of life that's first year of life uh, they moved in because they had uh, they took off the restrictions of the movement of the oh. german people so, oh. so, they, some... so they let them go and they moved they moved to Orenburg, which we mentioned before, which was down uh down on the southern end of the Ural Mountains, and that was a Cossack uh, city. Okay. Uh yeah. says here in his book at that time he had what, hundred and twenty eight oh, some so. thousand inhabitants when the Bolsheviks took over that city. And there was, uh, I guess, combination with the mountains, there was a Ural River, which constituted the border between Europe and Asia. Uh, sort of interesting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, okay. Uh, there he okay. got a call. I do not know, I guess with all of the German people moving around, uh, they found out he was a preacher uh, okay. fairly quickly. And he may have known that before. I don't know. He is uh, uh, 16 and 19. He's 35 years old. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Relatively young. Yeah. yeah. And he uh, got called to pastor a German Schwabisch, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, sounds like the... Uh, tire store here, but anyway, <laughs> uh, Shavish Baptist Church in Boznesensk. I could not find that town. About 23 miles from Orenburg. From Orenburg, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, I got tired looking on Bing, I'd say, on there or Google. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, well, we go on down then. Uh, from all this, I gather that Eric was eight, Oscar seven, uh, Irvin five, Alma three, and Dad one, the year he was born. That is, one year old when they left for the Rokha, Siberia, and went to Orenburg in 1916. From there, they went to Ukrainian Bolinia. In that's, all 1920. that's all the way back? Twenty. That's all the way back to the, the, to the west. border from Poland, where, they, where he oh, was yeah. raised and born. Okay. 
it's that section. Ukrainian he, side, he, okay. He wanted to go back. I yeah. think I mentioned it later. He wanted to go back to Poland, but they called him again as a pastor when oh. he got in that area. At that time, it wasn't Poland and um, Ukraine. Yeah, it yeah. was Volinia. Okay. Yeah. So that's like one place. Okay. Uh, so they were in Siberia, you say, here for one year, basically. That's what I can <clears throat> deduce, yeah. figure out. Okay. Uh, the last czar of Russia was murdered. In 1918, uh, a lot of people, unless you're very young, uh, will remember that they were murdered while Grandpa was living and ministering somewhere in the region of Orenburg. Okay. When all of that took place. Now, was this the same czar that he went to do the military service yep. for? Yep. Okay. That's all in that. Uh, that was the Russian Empire. Okay. Uh, at that time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is probably just a quote from Google. World War I involved 32 nations from 1914 to 1919. It redrew the world map and reshaped many borders in Europe. Yeah, uh, well, we're still doing that. Yeah, huh? it's a, there's a whole <laughs> series here of how the different nations' borders were determined during <laughs> that time. Uh, a quote from Google to keep in mind, the 1918 Poland officially, in 1918, Poland officially became an independent country. I didn't know that for sure. Oh, a little bit over 100 years yeah. ago. During World War II, Poland was occupied by Germany. Okay. So uh, it goes back. Okay, so so there are a lot of Germans living in Poland. Oh, yeah. And in, well... What became Poland, yeah. <laughs> now we have famous saying, famous. We have a saying here, go west, young man. Well, in Germany, it was go east, young man. Hmm. The reason was Germany, and always, that's to blame for the wars and stuff like that. They always needed more land, more land, more yeah, land. Yeah, yeah, So they so went. So people kept east. on going east oh. because there was so. <laughs> Plenty of land there. Oh, there was tons Huge. of land. Uh, one of. Uh, my wife's, um, Helga, one of her distant relatives had some uh, capacity there for the government in dividing up huge tracts of land for people and stuff. So there was tons of land, and that's where they headed. That was so uh, when, like the west in the States, that yeah, was the east there. Exactly. Okay, how interesting. Way around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yep, this, this one town which I really could not locate, but somewhere near Orenburg, uh, Nesensk, had several stations there, and they were widely scattered, according to the book. Nearby I had, nearby, I had access with the gospel in two German settlements, in which there were already a few converted families. Later, other individuals turned to the Lord. Okay. That's when he was in Orenburg still. So this is, yeah, we're still in 1916-ish, 17, somewhere around yeah, there, right? uh, Or 18, somewhere around there. Okay. I th uh, let's see, when when was it? I can't remember now when they went, actually left. It'll come, I'm yeah. sure it'll come up. It'll there. come up, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, about 46 miles south from Orenburg, this is another direction, I had a church station called Romanovka. Uh, okay. In Wikipedia, there were a number of those towns. So, at 66 miles further south, another station, Kursay, to the farthest station, it was 60 miles to go by horse and buggy from the railroad station. All told, I had about 190 miles to ride on horse drawn vehicles to the various stations. So, he had. He had to work that out for him. 190 sure. miles, yeah. uh, and he would, you know, okay. I also had a, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I also had a station, Friedenstall. Today is called Morne Dolina on the Asiatic continent, about 16 miles east. The Ural River near Orenburg was the borderline between, we said that before, Europe yeah. and Asia. So, so here's where. Across the Ural Mountains yeah. for one church. Okay, so he's. Starting to pastor or oversee at least oversee, yeah. several congregations, mm -hmm. and um, you and you have a picture here of that church. What is that? That is the first church in in uh, that part of Ukraine. 
and it is still there. It's now Did he, was he there? He was pastored. He pastored that, that church. church. Okay, I'll yep. pop that up on the screen. Yeah. He, he okay. That and uh, it's uh, something the else now, Orthodox, right? Yeah, okay. I have that now. So. Okay. Now we're now in 1920. Okay. Uh, after the war ended, he wanted to go back to Polish Volynia, but was called to pastor Baptist Church in Horschek, Volynia, northwestern Ukraine. That's that church you see there. Oh, okay. The first Baptist Church in Ukrainian Volynia. I would say Volynia in which country, because they were right. all one yeah, sure. area. According to modern yeah. uh, countries, yeah. There, we may, uh, Andy and I met a man here uh, south uh, west of or west of Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Uh -huh. The name of Don Miller of Oregon. He used to make trips to twenty churches with in that groups area. of people in that area. Didn't yeah. they have like uh, orphanages or something? They had different kinds of ministries. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. and uh, he, he found this church. He found. And he saw yeah, and he wrote a book on the persecution yeah, of uh, German pastors, right? The wolves in yeah, the, yeah, the, well, I forget how it's called, but something yeah. about wolves and where the the persecutions of the church yeah. after the Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, the church had four. Do you see that? Yeah, I see it. Okay, yeah. go ahead. The church had four stations to which I ministered regularly. At the local church, I preached only on the first Sunday of the month and other Sundays at the other stations. The church had about 400 members, including all the stations put mm. together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, the comment by my brother, he said the Emil Wanakowski family was sent to Fedorovka as exiles from Lydia, Poland, then under the Tsar's rule. Uh, during World War I. They managed to return while the Bolshevik Revolution was still not finished. So I was ongoing, but they were able to move around some. Okay. I do remember them reading about one week, a whole horde of soldiers would come dressed in white. And then uh, two weeks later, whatever, another whole group, the two bands, I forget, one was so white. So there was war one. going on. It war just wasn't taking place right there. In and there. out, uh -huh. of, of, especially Fedorovka in Siberia. Huh. Okay. Uh, okay, then there's a picture of 16 pastors that I will, it's not very clear, but I'll do the best I can to yeah, pop it up there. He's back in the middle with the red, <laughs> the red circle there. Yeah. That's him in the middle of all those preachers. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Let's see. After the death of the last Tsar of Russia in 1918, um, who was murdered in the end of the First World War, they and many of the Germans in the area of Orenburg got permission to, to go, go back. to Polinia, mm -hmm. go back, northwestern Ukraine. Uh, he wanted to return to Poland, but with the dangerous political, I read a little bit about that, that was not the time to move around between yeah. Germany and Poland. I mean, Russia and and uh, northwestern Ukraine now, wow. and Poland. This just wasn't a place to go. So the war they're having now is sort of just another uh, the, crop up continuation of this is when the persecution this is starts hot, to set in hot area. The, yeah, uh, wow. Churches, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so he is right now. He is twenty uh, thirty seven. I okay. should have marked that in the yeah, border. Yeah, thirty seven. I mean. Uh, Anyway, moving to Poland could have been a serious problem, and he had all these kids. Uh, so, oh yeah. Finally, they left Orenburg in September 1920. Okay, that's when they left Orenburg. So Their he's trip... 39 there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Their trip to Valenia from Orenburg is somewhat confusing, but it seems they arrived there sometime in 1920. It didn't take all that long from Orenburg okay. uh, with their rail connections to now. Uh, north uh, western Ukraine. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Several more are born here. Yeah. Uh, birth and birth. In My Ukraine. Uncle various uncles. You had yes. how many uncles? Nine, right? Or uh, uncles I don't and know. There were. Well, there you were, knew of. Uh, all I knew is there were 14 uncles and aunts. Oh, okay. uh, of course, I knew them. I, there, but here, but like in Canada, there were up, there were nine, right? Or something? In some a, there the was only country. one. There was only one in the States. The rest were all in Canada. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, now we're in... My, my interest, when I started this little synopsis of my grandfather, I was always confused where they, in their passports, uh, my brother had pictures of their passports and stuff. They were always citizens of Russia. And I said, oh, yeah. I thought they were in Ukraine. And so I wanted to find out where in the world did they live. And so I found out with my grandpa's uh, booklet, I found out the year, the date of their birth and where they were born. Mm -hmm. And then I just put on there where they were buried then later on. It's yeah. a historical kind of thing. But, but back then it was all there. Russia. That was all Russia. And then later all these names crop up that we know, exactly. that we identify now. Countries that okay. we recognize. Yeah, that makes it a little complicated if you don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 1926, yeah, what's yeah. that? I pass over then. Uh, I pass over uh, the... All right, I'll, I'll rate one, one incident here. It says... And when the political situation under the Bolsheviks came so dangerous, they accepted the opportunity to go to Canada. Uh, okay, this is in 1926. So he is 45. That, yeah. He's yeah. 45 at that point. He's 45. And he's been, he's been in the ministry. Since way right, in the ordination date, I forgot when it was. Yeah. It's, 10, it's, 12 years yeah. or so, something like that. Yeah. Okay. It was, uh, it was interesting. Okay. So in, anyway. Then 26th, uh, August, you see, you have that back up in 1926. Um, you have an August note there, right there, August 30th. 1926. Oh, that's just the trip then. Okay. I was going to mention something. It says on August 30th, left for Canada via Kiev. So they went west, I mean, sorry, east. From the U northwest Ukraine, Ukraine they, they went, went to straight Kiev, east, where they're Kiev. being attacked now. With, exactly, uh, where they're doing the bombing now. Yeah, uh -huh. From there, since they were Russian citizens, they had to go to Moscow. Which is what, way up north? Straight or north? north and quite a while to oh, Moscow. Wow, okay. yeah. wow. Quite, a, quite a piece. The whole bunch of the whole family? The <laughs> whole family now. But there's a, there's a whole bunch now, half or more, that are born in Canada. So there's... It's now the five, six, there were two that were born, I think, that died uh, in okay. childhood or in birth. And okay. so I don't remember. I, I didn't okay. track That's here fine. how many. So were they there. went to Moscow and then to Lithuania? And they went to Riga, which is in the capital, I think it's the capital of Lithuania. Okay. From there they went to London. And from there they went to a camp. Uh, in England, in in in, in England, in they were refugees, I guess. They were right? refugees, refugees, right? And my 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 dad had quite a bit of problems. He had a problem in Moscow. He got an eye sickness, and they wouldn't give him the visa until he was cured. cured. Okay. And then he went to Southampton. And he got sick again with an eye problem, and he stayed in Southampton. My dad stayed there with a brother and an aunt. Okay. They stayed there. Well, his sister, right? Yeah. Or, or an aunt of his. Yeah. They, his sister, right? His sister, okay. yeah. He stayed there with his sister. And uh, uh, it was quite the, quite, quite the thing. But I was going to say in Moscow, this is from another book, not from my grandpa's book. This is from another book which talks about uh, one of the uncles wrote a small book oh, also yeah. about that period of time. Uh -huh. But he mentioned something that uh, was, to me, rather humorous. He, when they got to Moscow, because of my dad, they had to, uh, uh, they had to, I don't know how they found housing, but they, they stayed someplace, <laughs> Who knows which is in history, yeah. yeah. But he said, uh, this uncle would say they would, you know, I thought they were fixing bicycles, but I'm not positive about uh, that. But okay. what he did say was on Moscow, Red Square uh -huh. in Moscow, and he said at one end of the uh, of the square, there were a whole bunch of people walking along, and they were all walking down some stairs down into some hole in the ground there. He's a boy, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he's watching all of this, and he decided that he's going to join them. So he went over there and got <laughs> in the line, and he said when he got 
the bottom, and they were walking along until they stopped in front of a glass-plated window over there, and there was a guy lying in a coffin. There's a dead man that down turned, there. Yeah, <laughs> that, that turned to be either Stalin or Lenin. Oh, Which wow. one came first? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> one of them was down there dead. Uh, it was, I, was it his funeral? Oh, no, it wasn't. It was no, just, no, a, just there. He was just there for people to it, go by and watch. Like a see. mummy or whatever. So. <laughs> I okay. thought that was interesting. Okay. So anyway, the rest of his story, uh, uh, he pastored. I've got a bunch of names here, but they're just towns up in Saskatchewan. Okay. Basically. Central Canada, basically. Central Canada. Uh -huh. Central Canada. And uh, he passed away in Medicine Hat, Alberta, uh, 1967. Okay. At the age of 86. 86. I am shy, just half a year. You're at 85, 86, right? Yeah, but 85. So, okay, so I have a uh, question. Yeah. So he went to, so so he he and your uncles, I guess, and aunts and everything landed in Saskatchewan, Alberta. How did you get to River Hills in Winnipeg? I mean, you came, okay. obviously you came here. What are we? We're at, what, what year are we on here? Uh, 20, oh, that's 67 when he died. That, that, yeah, okay, that's I was already here. Yeah. But, so how did that, how did that happen? Okay, now, they came from the east. I think most of them came to Quebec. Oh. And came west then, oh. traveling on the, on the train. Mm -hmm. And primitive, very, you're back, way back. Mm -hmm. And so there, there wasn't a whole lot of the and then. And, Grandpa went to Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. and there's towns mentioned here, but I yeah. don't remember which one it was. But he went there with some of the uncles. Some of them stayed near where I was born and raised. Just, they, just they, because they found they found work. Work, okay. yeah. All of them in, had the, in find, Manitoba. Then right. The agreement with the uh, they got there because of the help of of, of North American Baptists arranged for people to come from uh, these areas that we mentioned. So they did they pay for, them. how did they pay for tickets for like a big family like that? That's a good question. He had some money, okay. but he got money, I think, from the uh, from the North American Baptist, okay. whatever group it was okay. at that particular time. So they, they helped them come over, they actually helped them, helping with the tickets. They helped come over and then they had to work. Uh -huh. They were usually placed right in the beginning with some family uh -huh. and where they would live and then they would get a job and somehow pay for some of oh, so all of that. Pay back some of that debt. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And so some of them started coming into into the uh, River Hills where I was born was hardly a couple houses on the street corner. Yeah. But yeah. there mm -hmm. my dad came and my mom, my my grand my mom is from another line of uh, that's a different heritage uh, so my mom was uh, raised in, in the coon family and the coon family had also come from russia oh really uh, they didn't know each other but they came from different parts okay. and they came to our area of town uh -huh. We, they didn't meet in town, but we had a fairly large German Baptist church right. about two or three miles out of town. Yeah, and I think that's where they met. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I've never gone back into that yeah, story, yeah. but that's where. So, well, no. so the North American Baptist Association, or whatever that's called, um, basically helped a family of about ten. Yep. What the. The father being a forty-five-year-old pastor, German pastor, and his tribe, yeah. all are on a boat. And, yeah, so, and then then some some of them stayed in England because of a sickness. Your dad, my England, grandfather, yeah. was yeah. sick, but they eventually all made it over there. Okay, and uh, wow. Okay, well, that I brings us. Read, I wanted to read this. Oh yeah, here. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, wanted where to is read that? this because the question is, why did they leave? You know, yeah. I know it's the Bolshevik Revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an awful time to live, and they were offered all this. But why did they leave? Because he was a preacher. Sure. So okay, go this, ahead. this is what he says in a portion of his book. He says, the political pressure of the Bolsheviks became continually worse in Volinia, that whole area, not only in the economic field, but also in the spiritual. 
in April 1926, all clergymen of all religious denominations and churches had to report and were told that no children under 18 years should be allowed to belong to any church organization or to attend Sunday school or to sing in the choir or play in a church orchestra. It's very controlled. This was a hard blow to all church denominations. We could see that if that trend continued, in time all religious services would be stopped. That became reality. Yeah. And the very existence of religious organizations would be in danger. When one of our deacons and I returned from the municipal government office, we found that in the meantime a letter had arrived from a brother Kuhn, not related to uh -huh. Mom's Coons, but yeah. the missionary secretary of the Baptist Union of America. Okay. So wow. that was basically the... Uh, and and then, according... Now, here's the name of that book Don Miller wrote. In the Midst of Wolves okay. is yeah. A History of German Baptists in Volinia, Russia. That's uh, <laughs> the, the gentleman we met down by Portland several years ago, and he had a lot of information about all of this. But he says that in in 1926, that's the same year that they uh, left. Grandma, let, grandpa left. After yeah. some time, the new pastor of the church that great grandfather left, and two sons were called into the police station, and all three were shot on suspicion of illegal activities for the distribution of American Baptist churches contributions for needy people. So they that was were, a common story. Yeah, yeah. So they just lied, called them, you know, whatever. Um, that they were yeah. uh, using the money for whatever and, they wanted. And, and, and talk about being a preacher in those days. And there's 20 churches here. <clears throat> I read about any number of these preachers that were arrested then by the Bolshevik people. They were sent off to some place in Siberia, some labor camp, and never ever heard of again. Never seen again. They just disappeared. Fortunately, the Lord knows yeah, every single every definitely. single detail. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, that's it, Dad. What no, do you want to? No, 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 how I do you want to? I'll, I'll go ahead and, and you have quote that verse here if yeah. I can find it. That's it's farther up. You went. Yeah, it's. Uh, I went driving right by it. Let me. It's up uh, farther, here. farther, farther, farther. Yeah, farther. Farther. farther, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's underneath that. It was oh. right. It was. Uh, no, it was right above that. I think. I think so. Let's see. <laughs> we had this problem. Yeah, it's higher. I'm judging by your higher, higher, higher. It's above this thing. Okay. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Hang on, so mom. Don't let. We'll, yeah. Okay. The we'll, dogs are coming. We'll in. close. We'll close this then. Uh, back to the heritage, and I am very, very thankful to my grandpa for the example that he gave me. And later on in life, uh, the Lord called my wife and I to be missionaries in Spain. We spent 40 years there. My son, Andy, doing the interview here is a missionary there now, and two grandsons are missionaries there. This is an ongoing heritage. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the verse again, for thou, O God, Psalm 61, five, for thou, O God, hast heard my vows Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Okay. Amen. Amen. Great verse. Okay. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, ask Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're, uh, we trust that the Lord will continue to, to in our lives and, and in your lives, to use, uh, by His grace, to continue giving us uh, the privilege of seeing future generations be faithful to God until the Lord Jesus comes again. So Amen. that's our privilege. Take care. God Amen. bless you. Goodbye. Hello. I'm assuming that if you've watched this far that you're okay with a little bit of a family update. And by the way, you could tell that we had, we still have a lot of questions as far as dates and even places and some of that. So if we, if we get any updated information or corrections from family members or whatever, <laughs> I'll post them in the description. So I'm back in the Basque country. I'm in a little town of Tegama where we live. And I was glad to be able to do, have that conversation with Dad. I hope it was a blessing if you if you were able to watch it. And so, uh, let me see. First of all, I have two brothers, and the one right below me is Mark. He and I were little boys when we came to Spain in 72. 
with mom and dad. And then the youngest brother, Stephen, wh whose place my parents have uh, retired to is in Washington now. He's 11 years younger than me. And so uh, we, we just ate out with him and his, he and his wife uh, here recently. And uh, neither of us can really remember the other. This is such a being in the home at the same time. But anyway, so uh, both of my brothers are out in Washington and my parents have uh, retired there and, and Stephen is taking very good care of them and, and the Lord's blessed them um, tremendously. So we're very grateful for that. Uh, then, so then we, when we came to Spain, Mimi and I came to Spain in 89 after doing some deputation and David, our oldest, was already born. Danny, our second, was born two I think it was two months after we got here. And then Mark was born in 91. And then we moved out to this town where we've been for 30 years, uh, right before Rachel was born in 93. And so the four of them grew up in this little town of Thegama. I might post a picture. I'm gonna do so, I'm gonna put some pictures up right after this, just briefly to add a little bit of color and shape to what I'm saying. But they, they all grew up here. And, but now, of course, Mimi and I are by ourselves in the home and in a completely different stage of life. We had our most recent grandson was born six days ago and to David and Raquel. So uh, rapidly to go through there where our children are because we're so very grateful. Linking this to the whole story of, of great-grandfather is I, I believe is, you know, is, is part of the blessing of God on his life and on his faith and the ongoing story of grace, which um, all of you will be in probably either down generations down or maybe just starting with you, the story of grace as God works through your family. Um, our son David and his wife Raquel, she's a Spanish pastor's daughter. Uh, they live about an hour from here and have three children now, and he pastors a Renteria Church. My dad started with another friend uh, years ago, and that's down up on the coast. So they, they serve there. Then our second son, Danny, and his wife, Jordan, have two children, and they live three miles down the road in another little town, and they're very, very involved in our ministry here, both at the church as well as the farmhouse ministry, which is a lot of work going on there, and Danny, Danny's inherited dad's construction gene so he him and tools go really well together he and tools go really well, really well together uh, always and so that's david uh and then danny and they have five of our grandchildren on this side of the ocean and then mark married uh andrea who is an mk from southern spain they were married a little bit over a year ago and they live in greenville south carolina and got a great job. They're very active in their in their church, an excellent church. And yeah, so they live in Greenville. And then our daughter, uh, Rachel, who's the youngest, was the first married. And she has four children. She and Ethan have four, uh, our four stateside grandchildren. And so as well, they are uh, active and happy in the, the church out there where they live, which is about an hour away from Greenville. So the Lord has just blessed us immensely, just beyond our dreams, really, and our children and our grandchildren. And so we're thankful for that. And uh, yeah, appreciate your prayers as we go forward. And uh, the ministry here, God is blessing in, in so many ways. So many people are being changed and transformed and, and walking with the Lord and coming to know him that uh, we're just very, very happy to be in the ministry. Uh, here as an extension to great grandfather's ministry starting there in uh, in what was Russia back then. Okay, well, I guess that's it. I'll, I'll throw some pictures up here of some of these things I've just talked about just for you to uh, see where the where the children are now and a couple of other things. So take care. God bless you. Goodbye.